Thank you. So, um, like Julian said, uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, inflammatory bowel disease, and I will. I like to first make a short int introduction on what IBD is for those of you that are less familiar with the disease, and show you some recently published data from our lab. But I will try to make my talk mostly on, on non-published data because um, that I think will give you a better idea of the kind of projects that we are uh, right now developing in the lab and I'll, I'll also a little bit on how our research is, is leading our thinking in, the, in this field. So um, inflammatory bowel disease is a very large term that involves any, pretty much any chronic inflammation of the intestinal tract. And so that means that there's probably dozens, if not hundreds of different conditions under these terms. Now, most patients will be classified as one of these two, either Crohn's disease or uh, ulcerative colitis, and they will share some common features. That's why they're classified as these two. Uh, ulcerative colitis is mostly only colonic inflammation, and it's a superficial type of inflammation, so it involves the outer layers of the intestinal mucosa. And it's a continuous inflammation that starts from the rectum and can affect any length of the, of the large intestine. In contrast, Crohn's disease is, it can really affect any, any part of the intestinal tract from the mouth to the anus. It can be a skipping lesions that has, doesn't have to be a continuous inflammation. And the type of lesions are much more sometimes profound and they can even uh, be transmural. So in these patients also, we see the formation of fistula in many of them and also fibrotic lesions. So it's complications are a little bit more um, difficult to deal with in Crohn's disease. And, and in general, you know, uh, this makes easy the classification in between these two groups or mostly easy for most patients. But uh, as I said, there's a, uh, many different forms of the disease within each of these groups, depending on the severity, on the location, on the type of complications, on the sensitivity to different treatments, etc. So despite this large difference between all the patients that are put together into this big label of IBD, uh, treatment is pretty broad. And if you allow me a little bit rudimentary, uh, most of the treatment that is used today would be based on classic uh, anti-inflammatory corticosteroid treatment for, for both. I'm talking about both UC and Crohn's disease. And then f uh, to induce um, remission in patients that are corticodependent or that uh, or after corticosteroids are uh, withdrawn, they will use uh, immunosuppression. Now, there's also, of course, the use of anti-TNF that in the last uh, 10 years or so has become very, very uh, extended. And many patients receive today anti-TNF drugs in alone or in combination with some of these. But even uh, anti-TNF that not provide um, really uh, uh, cure and it needs to be maintained in, in most patients in order to, to maintain remission. So surgery is not another option for those patients that do not respond or for lesions that do not respond from any other treatment. But of course, many patients will undergo repeated surgery and sometimes even surgery is not an option anymore for these patients. So um, as a result, there's a, a, a significant number of patients that do not um, really receive uh, a solution or at least uh, 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 control of the disease at any given time. And so as you can